Well, first, I want to be fully full disclosure. There was a part of me that felt happy when you couldn't do the muscle up. Mm -hmm. I have that evil. And uh, there was a lot of evil that I had that day. The first one was um, the thought that I am better than you and Martha. I had this feeling that I'm better than them. It, it didn't stay. It came and went. Mm -hmm. But it, it was there. Yeah. right? And I'm very aware of everything that happens. So even an evil thought, I don't just disregard it. I'm like, okay, all right. All right. That's what my, my thought. Because, you know, you listen to Sam Harris. He always says, we don't know where thoughts come from. Nobody knows. Where the hell are they coming from? Right? Are, are they actually coming from my brain? Maybe. But like, why? Why did this thought just come today? Or why did this dream happen today? Right? Where these are dreams are also sort of like thoughts. Like, how are they happening? So my thought, when I, when I saw you doing the muscle up, Right, I, I imagine it right now as I'm talking to you. I can imagine it. I had a smile on my face, right? Because I wanted to feel the bliss of my buddy, my brother, doing a muscle up and the world watching. I had this bliss. When you couldn't do it, I had a small, very, very tiny bit, ha ha ha, mm -hmm. sucker, right? <laughs> like a Raskolnikov killing right. that lady in Crime and Punishment, like that, like resent, like, oh, he got asked, or why she, because in this book, Crime and Punishment, that the lady's like rich and she like gives money to people and then, and then Raskolnikov eventually kills her. And then, you know, he goes through this guilt, this crime, and how he gets punished in his mind throughout the whole book. Sorry for everyone who hasn't read it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but definitely it's a great read. And so when I saw you, I had this thing like he got asked, right? And I can't, I have never trained a muscle up. So I have this insecurity that I can't do a muscle up. And I'll tell you another thing. If I had the feeling of fun that day, pure fun of sharing love with the world, being in the moment, being in nature, being in the heart, then when that girl asked me to do the weird thing with the bar, I would have done it. I would have done it for the first time in my life, mm -hmm. pretending like I know how to do it, <laughs> like a goofball. And, and, and like a I, child playing. Like a child playing. And even when I would fall, if I fell, I would pretend like I'm supposed to. So that fun, that play, right? Yak Pengsap, Dr. Yak Pengsap, who's is no longer alive, he wrote this book, Effective Neuroscience. And he basically is the father the founding father of the the concept of play in animals right he would like tickle rats and and then they would have a different type of response and then he would show that wow animals can also play right animals can feel tickle and have fun so this concept of play which is the nemesis the the other side of tyranny right so if you ask a uh, jordan peterson or or you know, someone who has that mentality, tyrannical thoughts that we have, right? You have to be the best, right? You, you better get the Wi-Fi off today. You better do your cold plunges today, right? Not fun play, but tyranny. Because you must do it. You must get straight A's, right? You must be, you must pray every day and, 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 and go to the, the prayer hall every day. You must. Whereas, hey, it's fun to pray to God. It's fun to see what my potential could be, what God could be. It's fun, right? It's fun to feel the community during prayer, or it's fun to meditate. It's fun to be in the moment, right? It's fun to go and fail at this bar, you know. Doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> and I did it. I failed. I've tried it. Remember in front of you, I fell, I fell on my back. I remember. And I was like, well, I, that was fun. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. And, and, and the fact that I remember during COVID times, I was in Vancouver and there was this one guy, older guy, like in his 60s or 70s. He was a gymnast in the rings, bro. He was doing all sorts of crazy stuff, like going round and round. And, and he, one time he tried to like teach me. 
And I was like, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good. Because I like the routine, right? I don't want to do things out of ego. I don't want to do, I want to do things purely, right? Like when I go in the cold bath, no one's watching me. It's just me, right? Sometimes if Martha doesn't come, if you're not there, I'm just going on my own. And I'm doing the same thing, right? I don't need anyone to watch me. I full, fully love that. I have full play in that. And it's hard. It's difficult. So when they came to me and they said, hey, uh, is it okay if we film you stretching? I got a huge ego hit on that. Mm. Of course it was dopamine, right? But it wasn't like a serotonin being in the moment, you know, the feel good here and now hormonal spike. It was more a, oh, what will this do in the future? And how will this help me, you know, save me from the past? How will this compensate for the past, right? For all those times when I thought I was ugly or unfit or, you know, no one would like me because I'm brown and Pakistani and, 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 and oh, because I can't speak English like them or I, I am not as, as athletic as them, you know, similar to your thoughts from your childhood so i i was like oh finally you know now i've like gained this revenge right it was these future thoughts and so i right away when they asked me do you want to kid can we film you stretching i was like finally like, <laughs> geez what the revengeful so pride long? like it took you long enough it took you so long man <laughs> don't you know i'm a star like do you know who you're talking to you think I'm going to do this for free? <laughs> so so, so I, I kind of redeemed myself. It was a redemption. Yes. And then, and then I had the thought, you know, I should bring Jameson and Martha into this. I should bring them in. How cool would it be if us three stretched together? And then the thought took over. No, they asked me. And it's so interesting because we do... Our, our stay in the moment meditation. You know, we read Stoic philosophy. We read the great Greek and Roman philosophers. We, we meditate, we do breath work. But when it comes down to it, when the universe gives you that test, we fail. I failed. I big time failed. Because the right thing to do, regardless of if it goes to fruition, the right thing to do is say, hey, you know what? Jameson and Martha will stretch with me. And we're all going to stretch our own way, and it'll make a great video. And that lesson, that trauma from that day, I went back into my childhood. You know, what, what had happened that made me, like, whatever clues I could get. And I had a sense of gratitude. I had a sense of, you know what? This is a huge lesson. And it's a blessing. Right, because most of our weaknesses and failures are blessings. Believe it or not, they're 100%, blessings. Yeah. So let's use this blessing to always stay in the moment, always stay present. Take your time to make decisions and do what you really want to do or not do. Bring play into the world. Bring fun into the world. Because where there is fun, and play. There is no cortisol. There is no tyranny. So that's what I experienced. And I want to ask you about your experience with getting screwed over. Because you just mentioned it. So it's on your mind still. Mm. What has happened in your past? If you feel like sharing, if you want to share, you don't have to say names or... Right. You, things can remain confidential, but someone could learn a lot right. from this concept of being screwed over because I also have gotten screwed over many times in my life. Right. Many, 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 many times. And I can talk about those instances too, but please share with us maybe the the thing that comes to mind first. Right. How you got screwed over and what you learned from. It is a really beautiful experience. And I have shifted to gratitude for it. It started out with effort. I put in so much effort and compassion and focus and, of course, ego into something. 
that I wanted to do it with people I wanted to do it with. People I really enjoyed, people I really liked, I really respected, I really trusted. And I enjoyed that. But there was also scarcity. There was also fear. There was anger. There was resentment. And this feeling became overwhelming because something that takes a while and working with others and shifting ideas and shifting people, I personally never had any idea to change ideals around. That wasn't the kind of person I was. I don't like changing people's ideas. If something works, I like to create stories around it and make it entertaining and share versus trying to change ideas. My passion and excitement comes in the storytelling and it comes in the expression and the way to expand something, to create something. But when it comes to creating these ideas, my ideas are always like forced. I feel they're very forced out when it comes to like the basis for something. But then when it comes to names and and creating a story behind something, behind a brand, behind a goal, behind commonalities between people, I feel very strong in that field. So I didn't feel like I was a threat, but I also wasn't enough value in this situation with these people. And it was something that was important to me. It was fun for me. The first and foremost part was it was fun. It was fulfillment. It was the only fulfillment I had in my life at that time. It was the only thing that actually made me feel good about what I was doing. Felt like I was working towards something in my future. I was putting in the effort in the present and it was delayed gratification and it felt good. It felt like I was able to take this and work on it now and stay up late at night and go to these events and do all these crazy different trips and be able to be a part of something that was a growth for the future. And when I did this, I expected to be able to be part of that future, right? I expected to be able to be in that future table and that discussion. And I didn't want to impose my ideas and change things. I didn't want to have a vote. I just wanted to be part of that success because I want to be part. I enjoyed being part of the hardships and the difficulties and the shifts and the changes. But I also felt like I that would also come with the ability to success. And if I didn't succeed, then no one would succeed because the whole thing didn't succeed. But my biggest fear was being a part of the growth and development and excitement and delay gratification and then missing out on the success.